Brothers and sisters, in this video clip, we are going to reflect on the third essential element of our Carmelite charism. In the previous episodes, we have already dealt with the first two essential elements of our charism, namely the life of prayer and fraternity. So, today, our reflection is on the third essential element of our charism, namely mission, which is elaborated in this declaration from Numbers 45 to 57. In our constitutions, chapter 6, the chapter is entitled as Our Order's Apostolic Role. Now the question is, what is the difference between apostolate and mission? What is apostolate? What is mission? Etymologically, apostle and missionary mean the same thing. In the Bible too, they have the same meaning. Through usage, however, the differences arise in their meaning. For instance, in the non-religious sense, mission is a specific purpose. For example, space mission of a country. But in the canonical sense, mission refers to a territory where the church or the order has not been yet planted. It is in this sense the mission of our provinces such as Ranchi, Chhattisgarh, Tanzania, Zambia or Northeast and so on have their beginnings or had their beginnings and continuation. Now, the charism of a congregation can also be called its mission in the sense that that is its purpose and role in the church. So, mission in the sense that it is the, its purpose and role in the church. So we need to understand mission as an essential aspect of our charism. What is our purpose and role in the church? Hence, mission does not belong to the order of activities, but is an integral part of our identity. I repeat, mission does not belong to the order of activities, but is an integral part of our identity. I am quoting number 45 of this declaration, which is the most important paragraph of this section. The mission of our religious family is unique and unifying, intimately linked to the primacy of the search for union with God in prayer. From this source radiates the apostolic and social work carried out by the order in many forms and many nations of the world. Therefore, number 45 specifies what is our mission. This paragraph, in fact, underlines that our apostolate should be in tune with our Carmelite identity. In other words, clarity on our Carmelite identity will make our apostolate right, proper and appropriate. This has been elucidated in number 46. The mission of Theresian Carmel in the church is to live and bear witness to our call to friendship with God. Thus, from our intimacy, intimacy with God should flow our apostolate. This includes our own commitment to religious life in the community and the witness to a contemplative life 
as a service to the church and humanity. In short, we may be involved in multifarious and multifaceted ecclesial work requested by the local church, but we should fulfill it within the parameters of our Carmelite identity. If so, it needs discernment. It needs discernment, a communitarian discernment regarding the multiple forms of apostolate to be undertaken. And the document in number 57 insists that the apostolate is to be shared between the three branches of our order, friars, nuns, and the OCDS. Brothers and sisters, the three essential elements of our charism, prayer, fraternity, and mission. There is a unity between the three and that is explained in numbers 58, 59, and 60. These three numbers give us the summary of the three es essential elements of our charism. I shall read number 59 as a conclusion of this section. In fact, one cannot live friendship with the Lord without a true fraternal relationship in community and without an apostolic commitment as a response to God's will. Community life has no meaning if Christ is not at the center and if it does not lead to witness and service to him and his church. Apostolic activity becomes a worldly occupation if it does not spring from a loving relationship with God and is not lived as an expression of commitment and communal discernment. So, one sentence is most important here. Apostolic activity becomes a worldly occupation if it does not spring from a loving relationship with God and is not lived as an expression of commitment and communal discernment. However, an ongoing harmony between the three elements of our charism is a challenge for all of us today. Brothers and sisters, thank you for your kind attention. God bless us all and our Mother of Carmel intercede for all of us.